Hello, and welcome to 30 my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about the Array Modifier. Now, the Array Modifier is a tool, a modifier you can use to create a sequence of identical objects. Now, that sounds sort of simple, but actually it's a very powerful tool that you can use to create some very interesting results. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it. And for this video, I'm not going to use the default cube. Uh, I'll delete it with the X key and I'll shift A and add a new mesh. I'll add a monkey head. Now what the array modifier does is it takes the object that you have selected and when you apply the modifier, of course under the wrench tab over here in your properties window, it creates a sequence, in other words a row of that object. So I'll click on add modifier and select array and as you can see it made two monkey heads. Now, there's a lot of options over here in the array uh, modifier options, and you, of course you can collapse it and get rid of it if you don't want it, but I'll add it again. There's a count of two. That means there's going to be, in total, two instances or copies of the monkey head. If I turn this up, of course, I get more copies. And under that, there are two columns. There's a relative offset and there's constant offset. What this means, and I'm going to quickly press 1 and 5 to go to my front orthographic view, and I'll zoom in and pan over. This relative offset uses the width of the object to offset, in other words, move over the additional copies of the original object. So right now I'm moving the monkey head over by one width of the monkey head. In other words, from the middle of this monkey head to the middle of this monkey head is the width of one monkey head. Uh, if I turn this up to two, you'll see it has the same effect. They're now a monkey head apart, or two monkey heads from the middle of one to the next. I'm going to be saying monkey head way too much in this video, I can tell. The other option uh, is constant offset, which actually uses Blender units. So if you uncheck relative offset and check constant, all three are set to uh, zero by default, but I'll just click on X and I'll choose one and press enter. And now as you can see, they're all very tightly packed together because, and if you can see my grid right now on my screen, the center of the monkey heads are now one apart, which means they're overlapping because the monkey heads are more than one blender unit across. In fact, they're over two blender units. In fact, almost three units across. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up to three. So they're a little bit spaced apart. And that's a really quick and basic use of the array modifier, but what else can we do here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to four, actually, just to get them a little bit more room each. We can use two array modifiers on the same object. Now, what that does is, well, we have an array, a line of the same object. Well, if I collapse this copy of the array modifier and with the monkey head selected, I'll add another copy of the, the array modifier, and I'm going to uncheck relative in this second instance of it, and I'm going to check constant, and I'm going to change the y value this time uh, up to 4, and I'll press enter. And as you can see now, I have an array of arrays, or an array, so I have an array of another array. And of course I can turn this up, so if you're a programmer, you'll know what this is. This is a multi-dimensional array. In other words, it's an array of another array. So it's basically a bookshelf instead of a line of cubby holes. So that's great. But what happens if you want to apply this? What if you want these to actually be uh, a mesh that you can work with? Because right now, if I change one monkey head, and this is basically a feature, well it is, uh, if I change one, so if I, let's say, go to the Materials tab with this one selected and I add a new material and I make it uh, green and then I change my viewport shading over here to Material, they're all green. If I press Tab to go into Edit Mode, you'll notice that only one goes into Edit Mode and if I give my monkey horns, they all get horns. Okay, you get the idea? Well, if I want to apply this, I can. I'm going to go back over to the wrench tab and under the first one, you kind of have to apply them in the order in which you added them. I'll click apply and nothing changed, but now if I press tab, I actually go into edit mode of all of them and they are now all real and I can edit these all separately. Okay, so what if I click on apply on the one that's remaining? Well, if I hide it with a little eye, you'll see that that's what it's doing. It's adding the row of this one now. So I'll click apply. I have to be out of edit mode, I suppose. There we go, and now they're all a mesh. Now they're all a part of the same mesh. So if I press tab, you'll see that if I grab them all, it's all one mesh. How do I solve that? Well, if I press tab, 
to go back into edit mode, I'm going to select, I'll be in face select mode for this, I'll select all of the faces. I'll press A a few times to select or deselect all, and then I'll press P to separate. Now when you press P to separate with everything selected, you get a few options. Usually you just use selection, but in this case, we're going to separate all of the objects by their loose parts. So P and by loose parts. And now this one, for some reason, is still in edit mode. So I'll press tab. And now you can see they're all separate objects. I can press tab to go to edit mode of one of them. And that's great. But as you'll notice, where are their origins? Well, if I select this one, it's origin. In other words, the gizmo is over on this one. Why is that? Well, that's because their origins have not been recalculated. In other words, you can see this little orange dot right there. That's where the gizmo of this object is. It's in the wrong spot. So I'm going to press A a few times to select all again. And under my uh, tool shelf, I'm going to go to set origin and origin to geometry. And that will reset all of them. So now if you look at it and I select the monkey head, it will, uh, well, the gizmo will be at that monkey head. Same thing with all of them. So that solves that. I'm going to rewind a little bit. I'm going to press uh, seven uh, to go to my top view, and I'm going to box select all but one and delete all but one of these monkey heads because I want to show you uh, the last feature I will talk about in this video of the array modifier, which is probably the coolest one that I'll talk about. I'm going to go ahead under the wrench tab and add another copy of the array modifier. I'll switch it to constant offset and I'll change it back to four on the x axis and I'll turn this up to, oh, let's say eight. Okay. The last thing I'll talk about is object offset. What this will do is let me choose a different object to distort or offset my array. In other words, if I don't want a straight array, if I want a curved array, what I can do is I can use another object to define that curve or to define that extra amount of offset or change in direction. So what I'll do here is I'll press one to go back to my front view. And this monkey, and this is very important, is still at zero, zero, zero. I'm going to put my 3D cursor back in the middle of the scene, so I'll press Shift-C on my keyboard. Again, that's Shift-C to put the 3D cursor back in the middle of the scene. And I'll press Shift-A, and I'm going to add an empty. Now, I haven't talked about empties at all yet in this video series. Basically, an empty is just an axis. It's basically just a little cross that has no volume at all. It's not a mesh, it's just its own special object. And it's used for marking coordinates and acting as targets and using, as we are in this case, as sort of a, a wheel to turn or manipulate other objects. It can also be used as like a point, kind of like a bone to grab other objects as well. I'm going to put that back in the middle though, and that's important. And I'm going to select my monkey head and choose an object offset in the modifier options. And I'm going to choose that empty, which is just called empty. Now, if you noticed, if I uncheck that, you'll see the monkey heads all did sort of adjust over, and that's because probably this monkey head isn't exactly at zero, zero, zero. But now if I select that empty, and I can't really see it right now, so I'll just click in my outliner. If I grab the empty and pull it over, you'll see that in the direction that I'm grabbing it, it's offsetting, it's changing the offset of the monkey heads. And of course I can squash them all together or reverse their order. Even neater though, I'm going to put this back, I'll control Z a few times, put it back in the middle. If I rotate it, so I'll tap R on the Z axis, I can rotate it. And because that empty is rotating, I can rotate the array or the direction that the monkey heads are going. If I press R and then Y, it'll rotate up that way. So as you can see, you can get some really cool results. What I'll do here is I'm going to rotate on the Z axis and just spin it that way a little bit. And then I'll tap R and then Y to rotate uh, kind of diagonally and up. So if I press Z on my keyboard and I have um, uh, the pie menus enabled, you can, uh, if you don't have that, you can uh, change your viewport shading over to wireframe if you want to. You can see that the axes that I have, the empty that I have, is pointing sort of in the direction that's indicating the curve of the monkey head array. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make an array of this strangely curved array. So I'm going to collapse this one and I'm going to add a modifier again, array, and I'm going to change it to constant offset. And this time I will use the Y offset again of four. And again, I'll use eight. 
Now, that is what it is, but I'm going to add another empty. So I'll press uh, Shift C, and then I uh, to put that my cursor back in the middle, of course, and uh, Shift A, and I'm going to add a different looking empty. So I'll just choose this next option down, arrows. This one just has, again, arrows and axes on it. And with the monkey head again selected, I'm going to change the object offset in the second copy of the array modifier. I will choose empty.001. And again, they shift over a little bit because this one's not exactly on 000. And I'm going to select the second empty, so up here. And I'm going to rotate on the Z axis and spin them around like so. So now I sort of have a spiral of monkey heads, this one being the axis. And in fact, I will think I'll spin it on the R uh, X axis as well to get a very funky uh, spiral 3D shape. So that's a really quick introduction to the array modifier. Again, it's really powerful. You can get some interesting results. If you want a whole field or a whole you know row or grid of an object, it makes that task very, very easy. And if you ever want to make a change to that object, you can very quickly again by editing only the original object. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.